Quiet on the set. Roll camera. Roll audio. We got speed. All right, everyone. Action. If you've ever wondered about the entertainment arts here in South Florida and what's going on behind the scenes in the movie and television production business, as well as in music recording, then you'll want to tune in to the G-Star SongJam.com Radio Hour right here on WPBR Radio, 1340 AM, every Friday morning at 9 AM. You'll hear some very special interviews with producers and directors who are making their films here in the area, as well as hearing from actors, musicians, writers, project developers about almost every aspect of entertainment production. We've also got reviews of various productions, listing of opportunities for behind the scenes involvement, and useful information about how you can become involved with this exciting and ultra creative industry. That's the G-Star SongJam.com Radio Hour right here on WPBR Radio 1340 AM every Friday morning at 9 AM. We'll see you then. Cut! That's a wrap. Good morning, South Florida, and welcome to the G-Star SongJam.com Radio Hour. We're coming to you live this morning from the Right Note Studios, and we have some guests from G-Star, some students who have been on a cruise with Jonathan Crane out shooting a movie. Uh, we have also have a couple of uh, student interviewers. So uh, let's take it away. Uh, Anna, are you there? Yes, I am. Anna Placido here, and Samantha Counts here. And along with Eliza, Garrett, Casey, and Suzanne. Hi, guys. Welcome. Woo-hoo, hey, everybody. Now, what's the name of the movie you were working on? Dancing on the Edge. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, some people got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much for taking time out of your classes to come here and be interviewed. Um, yes. no or interrogated, whichever way you want to Yeah, put it. you know, <laughs> different <laughs> adjectives. So, um, do you have any interesting stories that happened on the cruise? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I got one. All right, go ahead. Let's spend time in one of the... Um, the big mansions. You know, there's only two great rooms there, there yeah. on the ship. I got to go in one. Oh. Ooh. I got to stay there for like a couple of minutes and then leave. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. Still quite an experience, huh? Yeah. Now, we all know that big cruise ships equals lots of food. Big buffets. Did you guys get any, a piece of that action? When we weren't working. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They had us tortured there and... Uh, yeah, anytime we got to. Oh. We went to the buffet and snu- snuck a few uh, desserts. Ooh. Ice cream. Sneaky. Ice cream. Pizza yeah. 24 7. <laughs> Every teenager's that dream. Was at night, wasn't it? What? At night. <clears throat> they had pizza 24 7. Huh. You could go in there at 2 in the morning. No, which... I mean, that when we ate the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, how long did you guys work for, like in the normal day? How many hours exactly? I'd say I worked about 18 hours. Wow. Yeah. Mm. I worked longer wow. than that. <laughs> Did you guys get any sleep? Uh, Two hours? <laughs> <laughs> when S- still Once something. we finally went back to our room, uh, we normally had manuals to look over for camera. So oh. That was fun. Oh, that, that must have been Because they're like, okay, you get to go. You get time off now. Go ahead and eat. Oh, and by the way, you have to study. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's right. I still had homework on the cruise. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, jeez. Mm-hmm. Man. Oh. Yeah. Stick it to the man. <laughs> so, if you could each tell us um, what specific job you had on the cruise, starting with Eliza, what did you have to do? Um, I was grip. Garrett. Um, <laughs> I was uh, electric. Oh. Casey. At first, I didn't know what the heck I had. <laughs> uh, it first started out as the main person of the costume designing. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. cool. As you can tell by my clothes. Oh, oh yeah, yes, stylish. But then, <laughs> it's, then it went to assistant costume designing. Oh. And then, for some reason, I still had co- assistant, and yet I had PA, I had grip, and sometimes gaffer, not all the time. Uh, uh the man's bringing you down. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that sucks. <laughs> Suzanne? It's uh, Savannah, by the way. Oh, Savannah. Ah, jeez. I always get that wrong. <laughs> it's uh. all right. And most people don't spell it right, so it's, I'm used to it. Um, I was originally told I was going to be uh, 
PA to production manager, mm -hmm. and I kind of told him, you know, I've, I did production manager last year on the films, and I don't really <laughs> want to do it again. <laughs> and so um, <clears throat> they decided to sign me up for a script supervisor and continuity, and uh, I ended up working on the camera crew and working with the cameras. Well, how how is that? I hear doing the continuity in a script is very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, especially with um, some of the dance sequences, and uh, a lot oh, of times be tough. it mm -hmm. wasn't just a straight set up they'd have yeah. uh, really complex angles and whatnot and so sometimes it's really hard but they we try to manage as best as we could uh, good that's nice See, that's good um we hear that eliza was uh supposedly missing for a oh, night and yeah. a half <laughs> oh yeah i was sleeping <laughs> <laughs> if, would, I, would you like to describe it to us please she got the lucky part <laughs> We were all working really hard, and our curfew was 11. So I went to bed half an hour early, because that's how tired I was. <laughs> mm. I pass out on my bed cold. I didn't even change out of my clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I just fell asleep in my bed. Well, that happened to me last night. <laughs> and they were going around the rooms, knocking on every door to make sure everyone was in their room. They yeah. knocked on my door. They were, like, beating on it. <laughs> and I would not answer. Bam, bam, bam. Oh, I remember Where that. Is she? They, uh, we had walkie-talkies, and they kept calling over the walkies. Can everybody please call room 105? Everyone call room 105. <laughs> yeah. And for like 30 minutes, we hear, please, someone keep calling room 105. They're not answering. We're knocking on the door. We've been here for like 30 minutes, and I guess finally they went and got a key or something like that. Uh, I don't really I know what like, happened. Why didn't they get a key at the beginning? Yeah, they got uh. a, they got the purser, right? The person. With all the keys. Yeah, and that's what I heard. Do yeah. they have to like search your cabins or stuff like that? No. Have to open it? No, but they did go in there and fix it every single day. And they even had like this weird, I don't know, towel wrapping. Uh, <laughs> and they'd make little animals with the towels. Wow, that's interesting. I know one time we uh, we got a squid and then uh, <laughs> an elephant. I think a couple of people got bunnies. Oh, no, mine for some reason it was like. I don't know. I thought it was a person with ears. <laughs> <laughs> I have the weirdest animal on my bed. You animal. <laughs> Did you have to share your cabins with people? And what was that like? I was very close of getting my own room. But no, I I had, um, I shared with Chris. Ooh, I almost forgot her name. <laughs> Candy. I went blank. Thank you. <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? Yes. Thank nah. you, Liza. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Garrett, you haven't been talking much. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Spill it. <laughs> well, there was uh, two other guys in my cabin, but um, we were one deck below everyone else, and in our room we had uh, four beds, and everyone else had two and usually a roll-away bed, so... Uh. <laughs> we had bunk beds in mine. We had bunk beds. We had bunk beds, too. <gasps> yeah. Bunk so beds. who got top and who got bottom? <laughs> How did you decide? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think the only top was the bed or the floor. Oh. It's like rock, paper, scissors, shoot. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Eliza, did you have, like, a bunk or a... I really? <laughs> had a room all to myself, key reasons why oh, they kept knocking yeah. on my door and I wouldn't be there. <laughs> Did they ever find out that you were in there, that you were sleeping? Um, the purser came in and she was a woman, so they asked her to go in and check on me. Uh -huh. And I was curled up in the covers, passed out cold, snoring. Oh. I hear it was just your eyes and your nose that was covered. Yeah, that, was that, that's like, it. that was the only portion of skin that you could see. The rest of it was sheets. <laughs> so, uh, did you guys meet anybody interesting, and would you oh, yeah. like to tell us about them? Well, <laughs> I guess I'll start it off. Everybody oh, that answers it. <laughs> everybody seems to be staring at me, but I met all the actors. Oh, every single everyone? one. Did everyone. you meet the wow. one that played the mom from the nanny? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just me. I'm going blank again. Um, I think so. Oh, yeah. But I, I had to. I had to because I was costume. Yeah, you had to so get the fitting. I, yeah, I had to watch some paper undress. Oh, oh, oh. Sexy. my <laughs> eyes are burned. <laughs> Forever scarred. Memory burn. <laughs> I heard she was in a movie called Dying on the Edge, so I thought that was that cool. Dying on, dying on the Edge. That never yeah. heard. That. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little tidbit, you know. And I heard um, one person from the TV show MASH was there. Yeah, uh, S S Sally, Sally Kellerman. Kellerman. Yes, Sally Kellerman. yes. She's a great person to me. Uh, 
outfit. Oh, she's fabulous. <laughs> she's oh, the fabulous. nicest person ever, and she's like, oh, yeah. how are you today? And, I mean, most of the actresses and actors, you know, are a little bit distant and cold, yeah. but she was mm-hmm. really warm, and she was just, you know, chatting everybody up, and it was oh, so good. <laughs> Interesting. A nice mm-hmm. change. Oh, yeah, I even told her, like, one time, she was like, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was like, I'm going to be an actress. <laughs> and she, she reaches over, and she goes, that's great, honey. You'll keep this up. And don't be like those other people. They're pushy and mean. Don't be like that. <laughs> so, I love you. Well, what about you, Eliza? Did you get to um, work with like the director or the um, actors and such? Um, <laughs> I got to work with the cinematographer. Oh, cool. What was that like? Um, it was kind of interesting, mostly it was just my name being called Eliza, get that, Eliza, set up the dolly track, Eliza, get the light over oh, so here. you were really being worked, huh? Yeah. So no, you were like the gopher. boy. <laughs> yeah, the gopher. <laughs> yeah, she definitely, you had a tag on the back of your shirt one day that said best boy, so she got an upgrade and everyone's like, oh, she got upgraded. You know? Best boy. <laughs> she started as, yeah. Uh, well, she's the best boy ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's why she got the tag. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And how about you? How did you... Um, well, I was working under uh, the gaffer. His name was Scott, and mm-hmm. he had just got off of uh, six months working on Miami Vice, and then he was going to oh, have to go. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, they uh, messed up the first two weeks, so he had to go back <laughs> for two more weeks and do the uh, first two weeks over again. I guess the yeah, camera department had messed up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Were you their best boy? <laughs> um, I swear, the camera crew was always coming to me whenever they needed power. They were like, Oh, well, uh, we need power for the monitor. I'm like, yeah. okay, give me a second. And I'd run off and do like 20 things and have it done. <laughs> That's what yeah. you guys were for. Well, that, was a, that was one of the big problems on the ship is the voltage. You know, you couldn't plug anything in. <clears throat> Tell you what, we'll stop right here and we'll be back after these messages. Hi, my name is Greg Hauptner. I'm the founder of the G-Star School of the Arts for motion pictures and broadcasting. It's that time of the year again when we are looking for qualified 8th grade students from all over Palm Beach County to register and attend our very special school this next school year. They'll be entering the ninth grade. Here are two of our ninth grade students Shay Roman and Angie Giamarco to tell you a bit about us. Hey, I'm Shay. And it's Angie. And G Star's the coolest school ever. Believe it or not, we've got a real motion picture studio right here on our campus. We just wrapped the feature film The Boynton Beach Bereavement Club. You'll be seeing it in theaters near you. It's directed by the famous director Susan Seidelman. Oh yeah, she directed Desperately Seeking Susan with Madonna, the pilot, and a bunch of episodes of Sex in the City with Sarah Jessica Parker, and many more films with stars like Meryl Streep and John Malkovich. Plus, 23 of our students are appearing in the movie, and nine more worked in the production office with the producers and crew. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good start, Angie. What else can kids who come to school here at G-Star expect? Well, besides being in movies. Well, Shay, G-Star has its very own TV show that is written, directed, produced, and starred in by our students. It's broadcast into two million homes from Miami to Vero Beach on PBS station WXDL. And Angie, G-Star's new theater just opened with its first play, To Sell Out Crowds. Let's not forget the Right Note Foundation. There are partners with their new state-of-the-art recording studios right here on campus. As a matter of fact, this is where we do our weekly radio show from. Yeah, so that means kids like us get real radio opportunities here at G-Star. And you can go to songjam.com anytime to hear the replay. But Shay, what about academics here at G-Star? Well, Angie, G-Star is rated in the top 3% in reading and the top 10% in math for AFCAT scores for the entire state of Florida. That makes us one of the top-rated schools in the state, including all public and private schools. Hey, Shay and Angie, thanks so much. The G-Star School of the Arts is located in West Palm Beach, three blocks south of Forest Hill Boulevard at 2030 South Congress Avenue. Our phone number is 967-2023. So if you're an eighth grader going into the ninth grade next school year, give us a call and ask for Deanna, our Director of Admissions. I'll repeat the number two more times. That's 967-2023, and again, 967-2023. Welcome back. I'm Anna Placido, and we're here with some students who are on the Jonathan Crane movie shoot. (coughs) Uh, on the cruise. Um, so we were just talking about to Garrett about how he had to run around and be the electricity guy. Yeah, yeah we had a big problem with, because uh, most of the ship was on 220 voltage, and that's because the ship was built in Europe, that's what they use over in Europe. And here in America, we use 110, so we had a big problem with uh, finding 110 outlets. <laughs> or we had to call the uh, ship electrician and get a transformer, which we did 
once and we kept the transformer for three days. So with all this moving stuff around and working with electricity and all these uh, all this Dangerous. equipment, <laughs> were there any um, injuries, whether minor or major on board? Not that I know of. <laughs> okay. So, um, when we came back, I know that we all had like cuts and scrapes and bruises, and we're like, where'd we get those from? <laughs> yeah, that uh -oh. happens a lot. I hate when that happens. Yeah. So, how did the lighting work out on the sets on the cruise? Um, well, a lot of the times, we would have interior shots in like a dark room, so we'd have to light the uh, extras and the talent. Um, but we did one shot early in the morning out on the top deck. And mostly that was just Grip had to set up a big reflector boards and two of the smaller ones. And we just were reflecting the natural sunlight to fill in so we didn't have to put up any big lights. Creative. I think that was like the biggest set we had to work with that day. And everybody helped out. It wasn't just, you know, you have this job and you have this job. Everybody pitched in, especially G-Star. G-Star, the two guys were up there and then another people were over there and then our G Star cameras were still rolling. They were catching everything in the background. It was crazy that day. Oh, so were there other schools working on the project? No. There was uh, other well, people watching. Oh. Well, there was actually, uh, we heard that PVCC had a, a couple of students that were supposed to show. And, oh, uh, really? I think they kind of got lost on the cruise. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much excitement for them. But uh, yeah, I remember that first day was real hectic. I was running up and down the stairs with sandbags, carrying tripods here. Absolutely. You must have been very sore. Yeah, actually, mm. I, I was sore around the second day. Arms, <laughs> you know, got my workout in. Oh, the, that whole week I was sore. Yeah. <laughs> my legs, I for, while I was PA, mm -hmm. I had to go run, like, all the way to the other side of the ship, like, five times. So yeah. How, how big is the ship? Um, in, like, if you could, in a nutshell. Heard, in enormous. I heard, <laughs> I heard, like, two miles long. Wow, so, wow, that's a lot of I running. I probably ran about 18 miles every single day. <laughs> a lot of exercise. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. You should do the calves. Get your yeah. cardiovascular going, you know. <laughs> just put on a jogging suit and start working on it. Yeah, yeah. don't yep. worry about the track upstairs. You can just run back and forth on the ship. <laughs> the ship itself. Yeah, so is this your first time working on a major movie production? For me it is, yeah. I've never worked on anything big, but I know a couple students have worked on the Boynton Beach Bereavement Club before. Yeah, well, I don't know if anyone I've knows. worked on a movie, but not like this, yeah. I've, this is my first big the box office movie. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, profits. How about you, Eliza? I'm a freshman, so it was just wonderful just to be there. I just like took it all in. I absorbed like a sponge. <laughs> <laughs> Our minds are like sponges. Well, exactly. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's the, the first day they told us we had to be spongy like. I hate it the first day. <laughs> Absorb <laughs> everything. So, Garrett, <laughs> was it your first time? Um, I've been on. I do mostly TV production type of stuff, but this is my first big movie. Or big. This is the biggest thing that I've done. For, shots for. I mean, I've done for TV production type stuff, um, multi-camera shoots for to live switch, and this was a lot harder than that. Because it was choreographed and yeah. uh, strict. And a lot more equipment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot more things to take care of. A lot so more things to uh, mess up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what TV productions have you worked on um, um, that you mentioned? Before? I've done the G-Star TV show. I've... Uh. Uh, for uh, Page Turner Adventures, I've helped Kenny Mikey on a couple multi-camera shoots as a cameraman. I've done a technical director for a uh, show that Right Note was putting on in the black box here. Um, other than that, small stuff. Oh, cool. So we have some people with experience, some people with very little experience. And So did, did you exactly enjoy this experience in particular? I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how did you guys get on the cruise? Who referred you? Uh, to tell you the truth, I was the first G-Star person, G-Star student to ever know. I went to all the meetings. Oh, I went rub to it the in, why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I went yeah, to uh, the auditions. That was crazy. <laughs> mm. Watching all those people. Who dance? 
and who don't dance. <laughs> but dance anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually on, uh, planning on dancing myself up there, but I was like, I already have a part, so, hmm. Ooh, what style of dance? I'm not going to even <laughs> get into that. <laughs> Savannah? Um... It was an interesting experience. I think looking back on it, I was like, wow, that was pretty cool. But at the time, all I could think about was, I just want to sleep. <laughs> I just want to sleep. But I mean, you know, it's really surreal. You don't really, while you're there, you're not thinking, oh, this is a great opportunity. You know, you're just having fun mm -hmm. and you're doing your job and you're learning things. Yeah. It's yeah. only when you really look back and reflect that you realize that it's something big. And uh, how did you get onto the shoot? Um, Mr. DeCarmine uh, referred me and uh, originally, they'd asked me to work on it before, and I said I wasn't going to pay <laughs> to go work. And uh, he approached me again, and I said, yeah, sure, I'll do it this time. Cool. Garrett? Um, well, it was a lot of fun, but a lot of work, too. And uh, Mr. Plum had told me about it. It was like I knew you were interested in it before, but you probably wouldn't be, weren't going to be able to go because you would have had to pay for your own ticket. And Expensive, yeah. Mm. And then... Uh, Actually, when I was getting, I stayed after one day so I could have my mom sign the permission slip. And Mr. DeCarmine's like, uh, he just came up to me and kind of whispered in my ear, are you going on the trip? I'm saying, yes, yeah, so I'm staying after. I'm getting my mom to come sign it today so I don't forget. He's like, good. I wanted you to go there and work. So that I was probably one of the few people that he would have said could have went and worked and he wouldn't have to worry about me breaking stuff. <laughs> Being irresponsible. Hmm. Well, they had to pick the best. Yeah. How about you, Eliza? Mr. DeCarmine referred me, but I had no idea. He just slipped me a paper and he was like, give this to your mother. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and at the end of the day, it. I was like, what was this paper? And I finally look at it and I could not stop smiling. I'm like, <laughs> mom, sign this, sign this now. <laughs> oh, wow, cool. So with all these these uh, good um, experiences you've had you've obviously been through a lot of hard work would you ever do it again yes. if you had the chance oh yeah yes? yeah without Definitely. a doubt <laughs> mm. cool <laughs> <laughs> moment of silence thinking uh, back at those days uh, it's like picture yourself running on a beach into the arms of a camera oh wait no ah <laughs> Actually, it's when, as soon as we got off, we were at, uh, I've made a little, like, survey. Everybody was still on the ship, even though we were not on the ship. <laughs> I was swaying back and forth, like, as soon as I got to school, I'm like, I'm still on the ship. Y you could have <laughs> sworn you were still on the ship. It's like, whoa. Did anybody get seasick from the cruise or anything like that? I... Well, like, should we mention names? Um, well, she, they didn't actually get seasick. Just mentioned like, just their first names. Little, <laughs> they just felt a little I don't think he upset. likes his first name. And uh. then they just, uh, you know, I know one of the people on my crew uh, just started feeling, you know, a little lightheaded. And so uh, one of us ran to get her, her some uh, Dramamine <laughs> from the front desk. So that was mm -hmm. good. I heard that helped a lot with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's from, some people from the production actually got these wristbands, though. I don't know. They, they oh, I, I noticed something before. They had these like little patches behind their ear. I was like, yeah, what is that? That's, that's a dramamine patch. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, that's interesting. We'll um, get back to it uh, after these few short messages. Have you ever thought about recording something in a studio? Maybe you've got a song or a poem or want to do a newscast or something like that for fun? Well, you know, Right Note Studios has everything you need, whether you're a consumer or a hobbyist or a professional or maybe you have a, a movie project or an advertising campaign you want to do. We have all the equipment. Our experience is 50 years between all of us about recording, whether it's television or film or radio, whether it's albums. we got people who can play just about every instrument you ever know, plus our MIDI system is so big, it can sound like anything you want. So come on down to Write Note Studios. Let me give you the phone number. It's 964-2446. That's 561-964-2446. 
964-2446, or go to our website, which is www.wnfpb.org. That's www, of course, wnfpb.org, and look at the part about our studios, and you'll find out a whole lot more. We can accommodate the smallest thing to the largest thing. We have rooms that are so big on this lot at the G-Star Motion Picture lot, and we also have a studio at the Kravis Center, so we can accommodate anything, whether it's putting footsteps in your film, whether it's applying a narrative track, or putting music to your poems. We have people on staff who do that for you, too. If you've ever wanted to get into a recording studio, now's the time. Give us a call. We look forward to seeing you and hearing from you. That's 964-2446. It doesn't hurt to ask. 964-2446 or WNFPB.org. That's Right Note Studios. And I think it's really fun. The Right Note Foundation exists to create, develop, and implement educationally relevant musical activities that foster vital relationships among youth, youth at risk, and their families. Our ultimate goal is to encourage emotional, social, and spiritual growth in youth and adolescents by enabling them to experience and incorporate the five pillars of character, respect, courtesy, fairness, honesty, and patience. We're supported by community-focused organizations, professional musicians, educators, and other creatively-minded individuals. Find out more at www.wnfpb.org. That's www.wnfpb.org. Welcome back. I'm Samantha Counts with my co-host. Anna Placido, and we are here with four students who are on the Jonathan Crane cruise ship. Filming Dancing on the Edge. Correct. Be careful, you'll fall overboard. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the title, Dancing on the Edge, there's a lot of dancing in it, I'm assuming. <laughs> Not really. Not really? Well, that would have been... Well, I noticed quite a bit, and I know a lot of it they couldn't do on the cruise ship just because, you know, it's something moving, and it's just easier to do a set to replicate it. Oh, I see. Um, but they did a couple sequences, and I actually got to meet the uh, choreographer, which is kind of cool for me because I have a uh, little bit of dance background. So was cool. Oh, neat. Interesting. Was so it how was the choreography, like on a scale of 1 to 10, if you, if you say? I'd say a 10 because, I mean, most people might look at it and say, oh, well, it's not that hard, but, you know, I've tried doing things like that and it's a little bit harder than it looks i imagine that you know with dancing it's a lot harder because you have to do so many takes Mm -hmm. how many takes did um did they have to do for um not that many one of the dance sequences not that many well they well they had a couple cameras covering it Um, so they could cut between those i know they had a handheld and they had a uh a crane which went about 16 feet i'd say Mm -hmm. something like that take about 20 yeah, mm-hmm. it, it went pretty far up. It was amazing to see it work. and oh. That was really cool. Yeah, but they had a couple cameras covering it, uh, the dance sequence at one time. So, Plus, all the talent was uh, very cooperative and understandable. Uh, cool. So could you give us a little background on what the movie is about, like the plot line? I oh. could. <laughs> well, uh, since I'm the only one, that, I guess, that read it, <laughs> uh. um, it's about these school kids that are from all different um, dancing backgrounds, you could say. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like... mm, Hip-hop. Hip-hop. Salsa. Salsa. No, no, jazz. Irish Irish dancing. Irish dancing. River dancing. Oh, wow. The rollerbladers. Rollerbladers also with some skateboarders in there. Mm -hmm. Just little, not money. Um, Ballroom. Ballroom dancing, that's right. Thank you. Uh, For, I think... Catholic girls. <laughs> I think so. Um, and then they all meet up to go on this one cruise to do to a, com- a competition. And what ends up happening is also there's a uh, reunion, and a uh, past reunion. It's like a 50th year. reunion. Like a 50. Yeah, it's like 50, a 50th year reunion. Wow, 50. So there's wow. kids and old people. That's a bad hey, mix. Old, yeah, rich. For old some people. situations, although it I is a so nice mix rich. for some. Oh, these conversations with the with the 50s rich people. They're like, oh, so excuse me. <laughs> I'm like, goodness. 
<laughs> I just hope I don't talk like that when I get older. Well, you don't see a lot of river dance these days. That's cool. And rollerblading. Did you get well, the? Did they do the ro rollerblading on there? No, no but they I'm saying if, you, if you're into river, if you're into river dancing, you would find a lot of stuff. I mean, you just gotta research about it. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, I heard there were a couple of G Star student, uh, not students, doy, but teachers accompanying you on the cruise. Um, could you give some names and what and they taught? Describe what they do. Um, they yeah. Are. Mr. DeCarmine, the film teacher here at G Star, was uh, doing sound. He was the only person on the sound crew. Boom. He was, he was doing boom. He was sending the sound down, stream to the camera. I mean, he was. I swear, he was like a ninja on set. Like, <laughs> there was only once when he got into the way of the lighting, but that's because we moved the uh, key light on him. So he w didn't know that it, we moved it, and then he went to go uh, for a close-up to get the mic closer, and he was putting a shadow on the people behind him. Mm, closer, young grasshopper. Well, yeah, the, uh, they, they were arguing about that for a while, that there was a shadow, and... I mean, mis uh, Mr. DeCarmo was doing a great job, and... It was always, uh, there was always, like, a small minor problem, but it was fixed right away. Mm. Yeah, he's he's done a lot of work on films. Uh, I think he's actually done the audio on Malcolm X, so, you know, we're really fortunate oh, to have wow. him as a teacher. Yeah. I mean, he has so much to teach us. He's done music videos also. Yeah, he's done yeah. a lot. He's he's amazing, yeah, pretty he's much. great. <laughs> but uh, I believe we said that he used to do grip and electric before and he mm -hmm. liked sound a lot better yeah well um he was telling us about his whole <clears throat> past history and how he got into the industry and basically um you know he just got really involved in his craft and people started calling him because you know he was good at what he did he worked hard and that was it and then uh another one of the teachers that hasn't really been mentioned but he did a lot of work was mr Sheik. Um, and he's also one of the film teachers, and uh, he actually had a separate crew, uh, which did behind the scenes, and they cut a, uh, I believe it was five minutes? Five, five minutes. minutes. Five minutes short. Um, what they did is they would shoot uh, behind the scenes. <coughs> they edited on the boat, and uh, the last night at the rap party, um, once we'd finished wrapping our whole entire film, uh, they showed it, a complete edited piece. Wow. And they did that in a matter of days. And that was really impressive. Uh, mm -hmm. I heard there was a background story to that. It was uh, the people who were editing it didn't know that it was five minutes long, and they had to they had it like this really long. Yeah, you know, they had to cut it down. And, the, and it, they had to wow. cut it down in like a night, so they stayed up all oh, night. Oh yeah, I, I remember going by one time. It was like twelve o'clock, and they're still working on their little <laughs> laptop, and I was like, wow. Well, there's a whole story behind that with a uh, spark, uh. but we probably won't get into that. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, the third person in my room was uh, on the behind-the-scenes crew, and he, I swear, every night he wasn't there until past 2 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Um, we also forgot Mr. Plum, our oh, yeah. other teacher. He works in television. Um, he was pretty much just run around, get what we needed, because we had to be on set if they needed anything, because we could go get it. But if we left something in the equipment room that we didn't think we'd need, but we did, he'd have to run all the way back up God knows how many stairs <laughs> <laughs> and drag it all the way back down. Wow, cool. So you have some hardworking teachers as well as students on this cruise. Right. Yeah, well, you know, I think... Uh, the teachers fit the students and you know there's a reason that they chose the students they did because you know some of the students here have really been inspired and influenced by these teachers and they've seen them work hard and work you know 24 hours in a row with no yeah. sleep and you know it's really inspirational and so you know hopefully we can uh live up to their expectations and vice versa Oh, good. So is this what you're planning on to do for the future, like after you get out of uh, G-Star High School? Working on plan? another movie, you mean? Yes. In oh, yeah. Whether it's um, crew or cast or in any of that cool definitely. stuff. <laughs> oh, I hope to be behind and in front of the camera. Oh, nice. Mm. Double so, tasking. <laughs> so, Savannah, why don't you tell us what you did on the first day, what happened on the first day when you first got there, and then we'll go to Casey and Garrett and Eliza, and we'll get all of you. 
Well, um, it's an interesting story. Uh, we had an orientation meeting with the uh, director of photography, which we normally just shorten to DP. Uh, his name was JD. And uh, I was really intimidated because at the orientation meeting, he would ask us these questions. And I kind of had an idea about, you know, how things worked. But he'd go into these long, drawn out, scientific, this is why the sky's blue because of this and this. <laughs> and, and he really introduced this whole new aspect that maybe science and math really does come into play in mm -hmm. every single career set. And uh, so I was really intimidated because that first meeting, when I saw him, I was just blown away. Mm -hmm. And so the first day, uh, he had myself and Candace and Crystal, who were also on the camera crew, um, and we were just taking all these miscellaneous camera supplies out of bags and putting them into this huge tool cart and he's saying okay that's this and this is the name of that and this is what you do and put this in here and do this and then label this and so we were pretty much uh, unpacking and he took uh, the tripods out and he had uh, a custom built head for one of them and showed us how all the tripods work and then uh, he brought out the cameras which was incredible because the first one he gave us was a, a JVC HD camera and he told us you know it's only been out a month and uh, he said, you know, if I feel by the second day that I trust you enough, I'll let you take it back to your cabin and use the manual and go over it and, you know, figure out some of the settings. And, uh, and he actually ended up letting us take it back after that first day because, you know, we'd done everything just as he said it and we were really on ball. So Very interesting. Well, we'll be right back uh, with Savannah, Casey, Garrett, and Eliza. Are you musical? Do you sing, write songs, play an instrument? Or maybe you can't play or sing a note. It doesn't matter anymore. If you like music and want to make your own, songjam.com helps you write a song in five minutes. You can even record your voice or instrument too. Songjam.com lets you download an unlimited amount of loops and tracks at the click of your mouse. Once your song is done, you can publish it on the internet by sending it to the Song Jam Top 10 for everyone to hear. There are some rules with that. Check them out at songjam.com. Well, maybe you just like to dabble. Songjam.com is so simple, everyone can do it, beginner to expert. Songjam.com is a virtual recording studio at your fingertips. Write songs just like the professionals, no matter what your musical ability. Think of how much fun that could be. And if you do have some musical ability, imagine the possibilities. Songjam.com is the easiest way to use your mouse to click and drag your way to instant creative expression. Song Jam includes access to the freshest loops and sounds. They've all been played by professional studio musicians so that your music sounds as good as it can get. Music, schmusic. You don't even need to know anything about music. You can use your computer's CD burners to make your own CDs, email songs to your friends, post them on the internet for everyone to hear. If you like to make music, make yours a little sweeter with songjam.com. Musical treats for those who love to jam. Go to songjam.com and download your free copy today. Welcome back. I'm Samantha Counts, here with co-host Anna Placido. Thank y'all. And we are back here with uh, Eliza, Garrett, Casey, and Savannah. And Savannah just told her about her first day on the cruise ship. And now, Casey, would you like to add to any of that about your day? Spill your guts. Oh, boy. Yeah, I just opened my insides. <laughs> um, it's very nasty. <laughs> um, the first day, I, that was actually, to tell you, that was my first time being on a cruise forever. Um, Interesting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. You too. Um, but I also, as soon as I got on to the cruise, I still couldn't believe it. I'm on a real production, a big set, and I'm on a cruise at the same time. It was like... Overload. Oh. Hello, <laughs> combo. <laughs> and uh, too much information all at once. Um, but as soon as we got there, we uh, the first day, w we had to um, learn our group, learn the grouping. I still mm -hmm. didn't know mine at that time, so I was like studying everybody's, watching them, watching <laughs> uh, Savannah work, watching Eliza's group, watching Garrett's. Ev everybody was in different groups, and I was watching her, everybody doing all these, um, getting getting their equipment ready. And what I found out that same day, while we were preparing in the back, the uh, the the other crew, the production crew, yeah. was walking around the whole crew, the ship, having a good time. 
<laughs> oh man. So, but I still think that it was great for um for. Savannah, director of photography, <laughs> to point point to her. GP. Oh wait, um, their group because I guess if um, if they forgot something or they didn't know, they would ask a question and right away get it and do it. Um, well, was it easy to ask a question? Was it like you know they're like such big people like so important or were you like kind of nervous oh the first thing that they told us they said don't be afraid if you have a question write it down and then tell us later and then we'll ask why why did they do this why did they set up this way and it was just really amazing because it, I stood there like th um, the whole week I had a book in my hand and I'm writing down so many questions <laughs> and I was like and then I got my answer after watching them I'm like oh <laughs> All my questions Across are being answered yeah. without them actually answering me. So this is great. But yeah, I, um, I bet everybody would have saw me with my little red book. And it, I was just writing a whole bunch of stuff down, watching everybody and kind of taking it all in like a sponge. <laughs> sponge. sponge. Garrett, would you like to add anything? Uh, uh, my team, the electric crew, the first day, we had to set up all of our lights. We just like kind of laid them on the ground up the side facing up you know the right side up um just testing all the lights seeing if they worked and i mean we got to learn how to use hmis which are big lights that replicate the sunlight and i mean they had to take 90 seconds to fire up and you're watching it, it starts out to be green like the carpet turns like a shade of green and then it becomes the actual color that's supposed to be blue and then, you know, we were learning how each of these lights work because we didn't, we've never worked with that type of light before. We were testing all the lights, making sure everything worked. We had to replace three bulbs. We had two lights that were supposed to be working and they weren't. We had to learn how to use all of our equipment. We had to label it and we had this big cart and we had to put everything under the cart in a certain area and then label the cart um, you had to be very organized. Yeah. Oh, yeah. we. It's just that way once we were done, we could put the stuff back and it would all fit without us having to move stuff around. Yeah. And then there was a couple of uh, problems that we've had with, like, uh, we'd go on to shoots and we'd start trying to use lights and then we'd find out that the light that we have doesn't work and we'd have to put it back on the cart, label it so no one else uses it. And it was, we learned... A lot of stuff the first day and I mean Scott the gaffer was uh he was our boss and he was you know telling us this is how this works this works this way he'd say if you guys have questions just ask them and we all didn't have any questions because he would explain everything as he was telling us very good yeah, see, that's good Eliza your turn well I worked with grip and majority of people have no idea what that is but yeah. grip gets stands, it gets things to block certain light. They pretty much do everything to make sure everything works and everything's safe. So nothing gets hurt, nobody trips, nobody falls. And on the first day, he explained what combo stands were, that they were used to flag things to block lights. They were used to, um, you know, to keep this from going over and putting a big white spot in the middle of the film. They said that C stands need to come open and this is how you do it so you don't hurt anybody. And C stands are so you can put bigger lights and they're more stable. And then they're like, this is your best friend. This <laughs> is the thing where all the tape is kept. The best tape. boy's best friend. Yes. I ran around with tape attached to me everywhere. A <laughs> big piece of rope and tape. That rope was my tape. best friend. Rope and tape is it's works wonders on a movie set. Oh yeah. yeah. All different kinds. <clears throat> yeah, like duct tape and gaffing tape. Scotch tape. tape. And then camera tape. tape for the batteries. It was so much tape. It was like ten pounds of tape. I'm surprised <laughs> they didn't give you a nickname after that. 
I mean, instead of Big Bus Boy. You know. Yeah. Tape? Tape Boy, girl. Scotch. <laughs> hey, tape girl, you got any tape? Come here. <laughs> Come here, Scotch. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, she kind of like stumbles over. Uh, what? <laughs> um, actually, I had a nickname um, by like the third day. People were calling me FPNL because I had, I was electric. I had my uh, electrician's tool belt. And I had all the tools that I'd ever need in there. I had like electrical tape, I think. I had to use it like twice on plugs because they were sending sparks out. So we had a, and I mean, just between me and two other electrics, we had a whole tool chest full of tools. Nice. <laughs> well, somebody did brought a whole tool chest with them. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was uh, Adrian, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just go to one of the uh, grip or electric, you say, I need some tape or I need some rope or uh, he told me to come get this I, I have no idea what that is okay let me go get it for you they go through like this whole entire chest of tools and wow <laughs> or uh, when we're shooting in the dining hall JD asks uh, one of you camera guys to uh, ask one of the grips for a screwdriver and I'm just like oh here's one he's like okay never mind <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, handy yeah before uh, we all went on to the set we had to um know what we had to expect we got like this huge booklet and it told like everything in it where what the um what some of the meanings stood for you uh, got a booklet i didn't get a booklet. oh you didn't get a booklet? <laughs> oh it, it had everything it had the, uh, <laughs> the packets of like oh yeah 100 those. papers yeah. that i it had the c stands <laughs> oh um, i probably should have got one of those gotta yeah. do everything <laughs> by the little <laughs> booklet okay. c47 C-47. C-47. Love it. Or a C-74. A C-47 is could, yeah. just a clothes yeah. pin. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> well, rent, rental stores. There's, well, there's a whole story behind it, and I'm probably sure I'm not getting it exactly right, but uh, apparently some production someone had on their budget C-47 that had like a ex- huge amount of money for it, and someone finally said, you know, what's what's C-47? He goes, clothes pins. So he just used huh. some fancy names. So it was that, a uh, it rental company that they were yeah. renting from. They one of the things was C-47s, and it was like a $40 for a bag of 100 Yeah. Wow. Brilliant. Honey, well, I need a C-47. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it sounds big and important. I got to get me one of those. Oh, they have a lot of weird terms. I know um, there was a couple people that knew what JD, once again, he was the DP, um, what he was talking about when he came to the orientation. Uh, he'd say, you know, I need a baby baby on a pigeon uh, something. A pigeon stand. What? On a pigeon stand no, with no. two <laughs> apple boxes. He said I needed okay. a baby baby on a pigeon uh, in an apple box, a half apple. And half and, apple, And yeah. some people were like, okay, he needs a really small baby <laughs> with a, and a bird. Wait, a baby and a bird is, is a and, light. And, and half eaten apple. Half of an apple. Yeah, and like half of a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, you know, they have these in- incredibly weird terms, but I, I don't know where half of them come um, from, but then you get really cool The baby baby is a them. type of light, and it's in the Mole Richards, Richardson catalog, and that's uh, one of the main... Standards? Yeah, yeah and that's for lighting. It's a brand name of a light, but it's become a generic through use. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, they're juniors, seniors, baby juniors, baby seniors. Tweenies. Tweenies, oh... <laughs> Wow. And when you really, you know, it sounds really complicated, but then when you break it down, it's like, baby, okay, that's small, you think of a baby. And then junior is, you know, a little bit smaller than senior, and then tweeny would be in between. Um, I don't know the whole story behind the pigeon stand, but basically it's a uh, a piece of metal that you mount the light on, and then an apple, uh, you know, they have these apple boxes. And so it's pretty much just a box. Oh, they, oh, they box. I think the... Uh, yeah, I have, uh, an apple box is the size that an apple box would have been back... I think, yeah, the history it. of it, that they used to use these boxes that would hold apples in it, like, from farms, and they would ship it in, and, um, and then once they dumped it out, it was just a box, and it's so useful. they call it apple box. It's, hey, you hey, know. it's useful. It it's a be, box. <laughs> yeah. It was really solid, and um, you could step on it, and that's why they usually used it. And then you could put uh, dollies and stuff on it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Custom-made dollies with inline skates. <laughs> so good. Inline skating oh, I, wheels. Inline skating wheels. I actually drew that down. I was like, I'm going to use that someday. Yeah. <laughs> JD, he had a lot of, um, I think he's very fond of custom-built things. You know, he's showing us all of his equipment. And these are my uh, custom-built base plates. And, you know, <laughs> this is how you put it on. And this is my custom-built dolly that I had made. And this is my custom-built tripod. So... 
<laughs> now, I'm guessing this Dolly is not the Dolly I'm thinking of. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Um, and not like Dolly Parton. Like. No, no. Uh, dolly, it's uh, a piece of equipment that you use to do certain camera movements. Mm. And uh, what he had, it's basically uh, a metal plate, and it's, you know, designed a little differently than what you think, but in layman's terms. Uh, and it had inline skates on it. And what you do is you take these uh, metal bars and you line them up across... Uh, what do we have? C C stands holding those combo up. Combo stands. Yeah, combo stands. And uh, and so you have these two metal bars, and what it does is it rolls along that so that you can get a fluid motion going left to right, and you can also do a pan with it and all that good stuff. So uh, that was a lot for the first day, but uh, yeah, a lot of explanations <laughs> coming about out of pressure, it. Pressure, man. Uh, <laughs> can, can you explain to us what happened on the second day, Savannah? Uh, well, the second day is when we actually started shooting. Uh, mm-hmm. The first day was pretty much, you know, taking everything out, making sure it works, putting it away. Uh, the second day um, was the first shoot, and, you know, they're telling us you have to be here by a certain time, and you have to be, you know, you go to bed at 11, 12, whatever time you went to bed, and then they're like, oh, and uh, you need to be here by 6.50. <laughs> and so you have to have already had your breakfast, be ready to go in the room, ready to work. So um, that means and so what we early. did is our first setup was on uh, the very top top deck looking down two decks um because it's a half deck on each side it's a little hard to explain but uh yeah so it was uh really hard because it's a lot of running up and down the stairs and uh you know we had all these huge reflectors and it was pretty much a dance sequence so a lot of work and we were pretty much thrown right into it and that's what we had to do just go to work oh wow so out of all the days you've worked on this cruise, w- which day would you say is the day you've worked the hardest? The last day. The last day? What happened there? We had a lot of scenes to do that day. Everything crammed in because we had a certain times to finish, mm-hmm. and that was the last day of the cruise, and we had to work that day. So, Did they reward you for your efforts to work on this movie? I mean... We got a free cruise. <laughs> <laughs> that was our reward, yes. All we- right. Well, uh, thank you very much. We're going to come back after a few messages. And I think it's really fun. The Right Note Foundation exists to create, develop, and implement educationally relevant musical activities that foster vital relationships among youth, youth at risk, and their families. Our ultimate goal is to encourage emotional, social, and spiritual growth in youth and adolescents by enabling them to experience and incorporate the five pillars of character, respect, courtesy, fairness, honesty, and patience. We're supported by community-focused organizations, professional musicians, educators, and other creatively-minded individuals. Find out more at www.wnfpb.org. That's www.wnfpb.org. Uh, welcome back. I'm here with four of the G-Star students who went on the Jonathan Crane cruise uh, movie shoot, and I'm here with Samantha, my hi, my my co radio co host. Thank you very and, much. And uh, we echo. we echo, echo. <laughs> we were just talking about the uh, production days. Savannah, would you like to continue? Um, I don't really remember what day was what, but uh, there was one day in particular that I really remember was um, the first day I got to shoot using HD. Um, Mm -hmm. And what happened was we had two cameras going that day, and I had to uh, start up on the balcony. And uh, JD told me to go up there and man the camera. And uh, there's a couple situations where he's like, how do I look, Savannah? How's how's the picture? And, of course, everyone's expecting you to say, oh, it's great. It's fantastic. And I go, "Mm, it's okay. (laughs) And uh, then there's another thing where... uh, a couple of teachers were joking about it over dinner, and they said, yeah, you know, he, he turns around, he said, Savannah, S- S- Savannah, are we ready to roll? And they just, they thought it was the funniest thing ever that <laughs> the uh, DP was asking me if it was okay to roll. So that was pretty cool. Would anyone like to continue on the uh, wrap up, the basically summarize the third and fourth days? How about you? <laughs> Casey? Are you, oh, are you talking Casey? to me? Yes, Casey. Yes, Casey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well then, oh, I wish I had my little red book. 
Um, summarizing that all up, and there's really not much to say about it except for um, busy. <laughs> <laughs> what word? Busy. In a nutshell. <laughs> I mean, some people when at, at times while I was still working at, there were um, the crew pe- uh, the the. Crew. No, not the crew. <laughs> the people on the cruise. Was oh, say. the the people on the cruise were wondering what we we're still doing. Um. What are we doing? And I was like, we're shooting a movie. <coughs> They're like, what's the title? Dancing on the Edge. Oh, is it like a uh, dancing thing? <laughs> sort of. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of. You have to tell them over and over, <laughs> over again. Well, yeah, at time. And then when we had like dinner, that's where we had like. Um, our number was on a card that we got the first day. Uh, we sat at tables, and I was surrounded by the red hat ladies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the red hat All ladies. of them. I had the red hat ladies, and they're like, oh, are you part of the movie? And I was like, yeah. What are you? Are you VIP? I said, no, I'm crew. See? They're like, that is so cute. I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> Who are these red hat ladies exactly? Oh, red. There are a clan of um, elderly women that uh, they have red hats and purple dresses. They wear, uh, and well, purple. not all is it the time. based off a children's book? No, it's a gathering of uh, tons of women who, at a certain age, to when they turn age, I think it's like fifty to whatever, uh-uh. and they uh-uh. all wear red hats. <laughs> All the time, red hats. Were they big red hats? Some of them were, and some <laughs> of them were fancy, and uh, they're just out there all the way. Okay, so Garrett, what would you like to say about the third and fourth days? It was a blur of sleep deprivation and espresso, so I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Eliza, would you like to add anything? Too much coffee. Um, me and Casey tried to top who had more coffee that morning uh-huh. to be awake. Oh. And sad enough to say, we probably usually tied with 20 cups of coffee every morning. Oh, uh, Jesus. And, and that Snap. coffee was filled with uh, sugar, uh, sugar, and sh- sugar. sugar. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and, um... Coffee? Cream. Cream. Oh, cream. Cream, and, oh, cream. cream and sugar. And sugar. Yeah, well, because you have to have energy on the movie set. You're oh, just yeah. running around and around. Eliza? <laughs> <laughs> um, and the major part of what I liked was there was this part where everyone was formal and they were dancing, and I loved to dance. And I kept asking people to come and dance with me, but we couldn't <laughs> dance on stage because we were still in our cruise outfit and no one knew how to dance and then Mr. Carmine, our film teacher comes up and he's like come here and dance and we walked up all the way on stage <laughs> I had my screwdrivers in my pocket and I had <laughs> holes in my jeans and I had this big overly large G-Star t-shirt and we were just dancing that was like the funnest part you see if I was over there I was working at a different area I saw you guys Aww. if I would have known I would have danced with you I was off getting espresso. You didn't ask me. <laughs> Good old cup of energy. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much for coming, Savannah, and Casey and Garrett and Eliza. I yes. bet it was very fun. You must have done a great job. It was great um, talking with you. Yes, uh, this is the G-Star SongJam.com Radio Hour in the Right Note Foundation studio, and I'm Anna Placido. And I'm Samantha Counts. And thank you for listening in. Signing off. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.